Hey guys, it's Tformers3 here. This is going to be a step-by-step -step process on how to make a blocky landscape for 380 animated brick films. Uh, I won't be covering material shading and this assumes that users have a basic knowledge of Blender. Uh, this video builds off of a few other topics that are already covered by others and I'll put links in their videos in the description. Um, but basically, you if you'd want to ever make a 3D animated brick film, you could use this as a basic background. Uh, it's a good alternative for a flat plate, base plate um, floor. And it also allows you to easily manipulate this uh, landscape using the 3D sculpt tools built into Blender. So I'll just show you that here. If you go to the sculpting tab um, and go into sculpt mode, turn up the brush size. And when I turn into, I just made a little valley there. If I do the addition, so set that to the direction of the brush to positive, then I can make a, a little valley and I'll make a hill over here. And there's like a little mountain peak now. So let me go out of sculpt mode and we can just see what we just sculpted. So starting off this tutorial, the first thing uh, you want to do is uh, if you have Lego Digital Designer or Stud.io, um, whatever your modeling choice is, um, some people use Mecha Bricks, um, but I, I personally use Lego Digital Designer and Stud.io or Studio. So I have just modeled a plate and one by one plate and a one by one tile. And I'm just going to use the LDR importer add-on to add those into this scene here. So if I go to import, file import, and then L draw, I will grab that. So let's grab the tile, I guess, or the plate, let's grab the plate. And so it imported it. And I set my 3D viewport to have the same scale as this plate. So I set the scale to 0.2, uh, I think it's meters. And so it's it's roughly the same size now. So the grid line should line up if I were to move this in the X, Y, Z, it should roughly line up. Anyway, uh, you see that why that's important a little later on. And let me turn on screencast. Yeah, screencast keys are on. Okay, good. So you can see what I'm doing in the tutorial. Um, so now that we imported that, uh, we've got the scale set on the 3D viewport. Um, we also have to use the, another add-on called the ANT landscape add-on. Um, and I'll put a link in the description for a video on how to set that up. But basically once you have the add-on, uh, installed, uh, into your preference, edit and preferences and add-ons, um, let's see here, animation, Add mesh ANT landscape. So that's the first one on my list here. And then I have the LDR importer add on also. Once you have that installed, you can go ahead and add a mesh and go down to uh, landscape. And I just added a basic landscape, uh, the first one on there, but you can really do any kind of landscape you want. If you open up the menu uh, down here, if I were to set this to, let's see, if we didn't want this terrain type, uh, we could do a different type. Let's see. Let's do a operator presets. That's what I'm looking for. And the canyon. Let's do a canyon. Changes it to a canyon. Um, so we can do that too. Um, so if I leave it at that, then the next step is that I want to add a mesh plane. So I'll go to add mesh plane. I'm gonna hide the landscape here so that we can see what's happening. I'll hide the, uh, the plate we added. Also, okay, let me go back a step. The plate, you have to, I just imported it. It's actually parented to an empty here in the outliner. So I'm just gonna click on this and Alt P and then clear parent and keep transformation. I'm gonna delete that empty, just get rid of that. So now we have the plate by itself. I'm gonna rename it plate, one by one plate so I can find it later. So let's go to our plane, and I'm just gonna scale this up a little bit so it's bigger than the landscape and the, the plate that we imported. So I'm gonna put in 
um, 9.375. You can put any X and Y value you want. I'm just going to do a smaller one since that seems to perform better um, with my PC. Uh, the, the higher you go with the size of the landscape, the slower the performance is going to be. So I'm going to keep it relatively slow. And then the Z coordinate, um, when you scale this, it should be uh, scaled relatively to the, the scale of a, a plate. If you notice a plate, I'll go back to this, the height of it is is um, proportionally smaller than like the, the width of the length. So the height of this actually like based on, if you look at the dimensions of the plate that you imported, you can uh, determine like the ratio of the height to the width and the length. And if you get that ratio, you can just scale up this plane to the same amount. So my ratio is 0.4. So if I do one, or uh, I guess if we, we scale this to 9.375. So if I type in here 9.375 times 0 0.4, that's gonna give me the uh, height uh, later on that I need and it's going to scale the Z to 3.75 um, So and you'll see later on uh, we'll just add in a, a modifier here called the What is it the? Uh, solidify modifier because the plane it doesn't have any uh, Z direction and no thickness, but this modifier adds thickness. So I'm going to go ahead and add in some thickness um, I'm gonna put 0 0.04 in for that and so I just added a little bit of thickness so that this plane we can actually transform it and it will have like geometry it won't be like zero thickness geometry um, so I'll hide that plate again and so now I'm going to um, go into edit mode into this plane what used to be plane and I'm gonna I have like edge mode selected I'm gonna type a to select all and I'm gonna subdivide it a couple times and you don't have to subdivide it crazy, but I'll just do it like three or four times. And you can maybe adjust that later on if you want, but I'll subdivide it. So there's a good amount of subdivisions. The more subdivisions you have, the smoother the landscape will be uh, at the end. So if you have like not too many subdivisions, it'll be like a slope, one big slope. But if you subdivide it, it'll allow you to um, make more gradual uh, changes in elevations or the canyon that we have is going to look a lot smoother. Um, so I'm going to exit edit mode here and go into ob object mode here. And let's see what's the next step is to go to this plane, add a remesh modifier. And so this is really the, um, the crux of how you do this is when you add this remesh modifier, there's an option here for blocks. And when you do that, uh, it basically takes the geometry and um, changes the mesh into uh, little cubes and it looks end up looking kind of like Minecraft. Uh, but because we scaled it where the height is not as big, it's the value for the height is smaller than like the length and the width. It'll make it so that the dimensions look relatively similar to a, like an, a Lego plate, like a one by one plate. So uh, you'll see that a little later. So I'm gonna like go up to like octree depth of like six, but we'll play with that later. I'm just gonna start with that. Um, so there's a couple settings here you can play with the remesh modifier. I'll put it, maybe a link in the description for the Blender manual on that, how to use that. So there's octree depth and there's scale. So you'll have to play with these a little bit later to get the right um, look that you want. So now that we added that remesh modifier, um, we're going to set this plane, it's object data, that's uh, mesh data, to be the same as the landscape. And so basically this object is separate, but it's going to use the mesh data from the landscape, the ANT landscape that we added in earlier. So if I set that, it gets really big, and then you can kind of see the general shape of the canyon. It looks kind of like a canyon, but not quite... Um, it's starting to look more like a canyon. And um, so now, um, let's see, what's the next step is, let's try to show this one by one plate. And I'm gonna, it's down below this uh, plane now. So I'm gonna actually increase the Z value. 
so it goes above the plane. And I'm gonna go into a top-down view. And I'm also gonna go into wireframe view so that I can see the size of this plate and the size of the, um, the remesh modifier, the, little, the blocks that it made. You can see the size of it now and how it relates to the size of this plate that we imported. And the goal is to get the, the same size. That you want these little cubes to be the same size as this plate that we made. So if you go into the top down view, um, and then we can play around with that remesh modifier. We can increase the octree depth and then reduce the scale a little bit. And once we do that, it should, um, let's take a little bit to load here, I guess. It should start looking a little bit closer to the geometry of the plate. So let me see if I can get it close enough to that. That's about the same. If I were to move this plate a little bit in the Y direction, yeah, it's a, it about lines up. So, um, I'm gonna exit wireframe, go into solidified view now. And so this looks pretty good. It looks like a blocky landscape, but um, I think it, it's missing some studs. And a lot of times, uh, you know, the Lego classic look has the studs. So I want these studs to appear different places around this sporadically. So what I did was um, take the one by one plate and make it a particle system of this uh, plane that we uh, transformed here. So what I'm going to do is add another modifier or actually I'm going to go down to particle systems, click on the plane, go to particle systems, hit the plus icon and add a particle system. And so now I'm going to switch it to hair instead of emitter and then under source we're going to do vertices and then in viewport display we're going to render it display as render sorry render render as object and then the object we have to select instance objects so i'm going to select the plane the plate in the object tree and we're going to use global and ob coordinates object rotation and i'm going to go up to you have to hit advanced and uh, i'm using 2.9 90.1 Blender and that'll enable me to select rotation. So if I hit rotation, um, I'm gonna start with none, and then if if it these plates end up appearing like uh, upside down or something, we could play around with it. But hair length, I'm gonna set that to one. Uh, number is a thousand. Rendered as okay. So. Nothing's showing up right now. I'm trying to think why is that. Um, could be. Is this plate set to show in the viewport? If you toggle that in the filter, you can see the plate is showing. Hmm. And we have in our particle system, render as object, show emitter. Oh, the scale. We didn't set the scale for the object. So we have it at 0.05. By default, it's 0.05. We want to set that to one. Uh, so it might have been too small to see. No, that's not the case. Still not showing. And let's see if we need to select something else. It's another setting in here. Velocity, no, physics. Hmm. Something is not showing. So if I go up to, let's see, use modifier stack. Let's try that. Okay. Yeah, that's what it was because it wasn't, um, it wasn't looking at the modifier stack for this plane. It wasn't doing the remesh and the solidify. So these vertices were not appearing in the right places. And uh, we had our particle system set at a thousand. So uh, it's a lot of little plates. So if we put it at, uh, let's say like 50, the number's gonna go way down. And then if we put this plate back down and the Z set that back to zero, then they'll start appearing on the surface now. 
And so that's looking a lot closer to uh, the earlier thing that I showed you. But you can see that this, uh, let me go to wireframe. This plate is still not lined up. So it's, it's off center and it's not appearing uh, in the center of where you'd expect it to be. So you have to offset the X and Y a little bit. So I found that point one in both directions usually works. Let's see. Yeah, so I offset it. You can see where it is in the uh, global space, but then um, you can see also where it put it in relation to the, um, let me go to solidified view, to the plane. So now it's looking like it's kind of lining up with the rest of the blocks that the remesh metal fire made. So, and if, if you like, uh, you know, sporadic plates, this is fine, but I'm gonna crank it up a little bit, bring up the number of hairs or the plates, the particles to 100, double that. So now it looks a little better. Um, and I'm just gonna quickly go into the materials here edit that, uh, make it the same color as the, uh, the plane. And I, I did mention though earlier that I'm not gonna be covering materials in this one, but um, so now they have the same, same color. And actually I'm gonna darken that a little bit to get closer to what we were showing earlier in the other shot. So if I go back to the layout, so this is pretty much um, it. I mean, we didn't we adjusted the octree depth to make these um, to make the blocks about the right sizes for the plate, and you can um, you can edit this. You can sculpt this. Uh, obviously, we used a uh, canyon landscape, but if you were to like, you wanted a different template to start with. You could either sculpt it or you can start with another template. But if I were to just delete this landscape. Um, and then add in another ant landscape mesh land landscape. Let's just use the normal default one. Is it still at Canyon? It would be Canyon still. Let's do default. Go to the default one. And now this mesh is called landscape 0.001. So in the plane, I need to change the mesh to say landscape.0001.001. So now it looks like the uh, now it looks like the landscape that we just added, except it's gonna be scaled, of course, on the z-axis, but that's okay. It's just a template to start with. And uh, now I can go ahead and sculpt it however I want to fit my scene. And it'd be a good background um, if I ever wanted to put some minifigures or something in front of it. Um, just use a shaded view here. Uh, actually, I didn't set a material on this one. Looks kind of funny that way. Let me go back to sculpting. And now this is basically what I was showing you earlier that you can go ahead and just sculpt it up now. Turn the radius up on the brush and the strength. And we're just gonna make a make another big mountain or something. Maybe not that big, the radius. But yeah, if I were to sculpt this, it can make a really interesting mountain there. And you can just real time sculpt that, make it any shape you want. And you can have mountains and you can have little plates that appear on it. So that's the end of this tutorial. And thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe uh, to help support the channel. I really appreciate all the support. And hopefully this helps a lot of people. Have a good one.